just thinking how to start this video. It's not that easy to be creative. Actually, it's been a year since I started my YouTube channel, so I thought it's a good time to introduce myself. And to do that, I'll show you a two minutes video which I sent to GCN. And I did this because they were looking for a GCN tech presenter and applicants had to send a two minutes video introducing themselves, introducing why they would be um, a good next GCN tech presenter. So check it out. Hi GCN team and GCN subscribers, my name is Oleg. I live in London and work in the financial industry, but my career started in a bike shop, which my friend and I launched and were successfully running for a number of years before I moved to London. While I'll be a great GCN presenter, there are three reasons for that. Reason number one, I love building bikes, riding bikes, fixing bikes, and since my wife is watching this video, darling, I love you more. I'm passionate about learning new bike tech that has been flooding the market in the recent years, and I'm not just talking about gravel, even though I think that each candidate for the GCN presenter role need to say this word gravel at least three times in their video because it seems this word gravel is the key to success in anything that is happening in the bike industry right now. But back to riding bikes. I'm that kind of guy who could be riding downhill in a full face helmet, full armor on one day and then be squeezed into tight lycra doing miles on my road bike on the next day. On one day I may be doing trials or riding in a skate park and the next day racing on my cyclocross bike even though one could argue that some of the British cyclocross races are more running than actually cycling. And by the way, I do ride gravel. Reason number two. All the bikes that I've just mentioned, I built myself from scratch. This is in addition to dozens of other bikes that I built for my friends and clients. So I know this stuff. I assembled mountain road cyclocross bikes on steel titanium, aluminum, carbon frames, worked with Shimano, SRAM, company on mechanical and electronic group sets, rim and disc brakes, and so on. I know the modern geometric differences and how they impact your ride, and I'm also a weight winnie in a good way. Reason number three. I'm also into photo and video, and I even carried my full-size Sony camera all the way from Lenzan to John O'Groats during the ride across Britain. This all led to me starting my YouTube channel called Twisted Wheels last year, where I am showing all my bike builds, sharing technical advice and tips, and expressing myself in general. I received a very positive feedback from my friends, from cycling brands, from general public. This is something I really enjoy doing and it allows me to release my creative energy. So that were my three reasons why I could be a great GCN presenter. Now it's your move GCN. I hope you all agree that it was a brilliant presentation. But I didn't get the role. Well, uh, it is what it is. At least I can make videos not just about road cycling or gravel cycling, but also about mountain biking, trials, downhill, etc. and build whatever I want, whenever I want it. You may have noticed in the video presentation that there was a Cannondale frame set standing in the corner of the room. And there is a story behind me buying this frame set. In 2019, Cannondale released their brand new FC High Mod frame with the new Lefty Orchard fork. And it was incredibly light. They made it in the limited edition 1990s color scheme, uh, blue and red. And I was a big fan of that blue color scheme with yellow letters. And I always wanted to have the frame in this color scheme. These frame sets, when they just released them, they were very expensive. So I, I thought, okay, it's a great frame set, but I wouldn't buy it for that money. So I waited for a year. And then when people started selling them used on eBay, I bought one. There was only one problem. It was based in the US. So I ordered it to my brother's address with the intention to bring in this frame set in March when I fly to see him. But with the virus taking up the world and locking us in our homes, I wasn't able to do so. So I thought, mm, why don't I try and find an old school frame from 1990s and build a bike on that frame? And that was the frame set that I bought. So yeah, that's the frame. I was very happy to find this one in such a good condition. 
I, th I believe this is one of the first frames that they made with the disc mounts. This is CAD 3. We still have the mounts for the V-brakes, which I will remove uh, because I will be building this bike on disc brakes. And when I was thinking what components to put on this bike, I had two options. Option number one is build it on the old school components of that era. Uh, but it would be quite difficult to find them in as good condition as the frame set. And option number two was to build them on the modern components. And I really like that idea because I like the looks of the old frame, but I like the performance, weight, stiffness of the new components on the market. So I thought it's a great idea and that's what I stick to. That's it for today's episode. I hope you're as excited as I am about this build. Subscribe to my channel not to miss the next episode where I will be showing the parts I have for this bike and also how the final build will look like. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So I'll see you soon.